We are in a place where people normally learn how to fix fridges. But I plan to do the exact opposite. Thank you for your service, Fridge. I'm going to take you apart, but I'm not going to take you apart, which in a way which means you're going to be able to be put back together, so. This old thing was headed for recycling, which should be the end game for any unfixable fridge. Faulty fridges aren't common, but their flammable innards do pose a fire risk. So it goes without saying, dear viewer, you must absolutely not do this at home. I'm extracting the cooling system, starting with the hot bit, where heat from inside the fridge radiates away into the room. This is the bit that gets warm. And then the compressor underneath. Ooh! And the cold bit, helpfully buried inside layers of insulation. Oh, this is going to be fun. I feel like an ancient Greek sculptor. <laughs> I think that was the shelves. Yeah! This is much more fun than playing with tiny screws, isn't it? Oh, yes. And there it is. Cold bit. Looks a bit different to Bosch's fancy pants cold bit, but it does the same thing. And now easy access to your eggs and milk. These rather indecorously presented innards okay. are where the magic happens. Or, well, happened before I tore it apart. So here we have the slightly mangled cooling system. That's actually a really terrible name. It should be called the heat moving system because, according to the laws of physics, cold isn't a thing. Cold is just the absence of heat. You can't cool something down. You can only take heat away. And that is what this one system is designed to do. At its heart, the cooling system is just a giant snaking tube. It is filled with a substance that is liquid in some parts and a gas in others. The substance is unsurprisingly called refrigerant. More on that later. But it's the switch between liquid and gas that's crucial. One switch happens here in the evaporator. You pop something in the fridge, the heat of that thing gets absorbed by this part. The refrigerant comes into the evaporator as liquid and sprays out as gas, and that process needs energy. The gas absorbs all of the heat from anything that you have inside the fridge cabinet. All that heat energy then comes back around here, all the way up here, and then into this part, a pump called the compressor. This, as the name might suggest, is compressing that gas, pumping and pumping and pumping to increase the pressure. The compressor drives the refrigerant through the cooling system, taking all that absorbed heat energy with it. As it comes out here then, you've got this hot, high-pressure gas that comes along this tube, snakes its way all the way around, up and down and up and down, radiating heat out into the room as it goes. And all the while, it's condensing back into a liquid, ready to start another loop back in the same system again. It's called the vapour compression cooling cycle, and it moves heat energy in the opposite direction to the way it wants to go, creating a cold space here and pushing heat energy out into an already warm room here. It's basically designed to cheat physics. This is a one-way street. For heat. It's being absorbed from anything that you put inside your fridge and then radiated out into the room by this whole contraption. 